Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all keeping well. Right, exposure blending. I don't know if you can remember, but I did promise you in last week's video when I was down on the south coast at Dancing Ledge with good mate James Marsh photographing that fantastic rock pool and the lovely cliffs in the background. I did promise that I'd quickly show you how I blend two images together, two different exposed images together in Lightroom. So I've got the screen recording, I've got the two images chosen and ready to show you, so let's jump into the screen and I'll show you how I quickly blend two images together. Right, so we've got these two images here, I'll just show you them a bit larger, so we're going to develop. So that's the first one, obviously focused, I think I focused around here on the rock pool mainly because that was my main subject, a nice leading line leading into these cliffs. So I've exposed for the cliffs and the rock pool, now as you can see the sky is totally overexposed. So all I do is knock up the shutter speed to underexpose my subject but get the sky right as you can see there. I've got a bit of a hair there, look that's on my sensor so that need, my sensor needs a clean soon. But anyway as you can see so that's exposed for the, the foreground and my main subject and then up the shutter speed and get the exposure right for the sky. So let's go back into library. So I'm going to hit command and highlight both of them, so they're both highlighted now, into photo and then photo merge and then HDR or high dynamic range. HDR, so we'll click on that and then it's just going to create a preview now, so there's the preview. As you can see, it doesn't look too bad like that. It's a bit overexposed here, perhaps. But uh, So I'm going to keep everything on auto. No de-ghost amount or anything like that. So we'll hit merge. That'll now merge it together. The progress bar's up here. And then it'll give us a third image. And that third image, the merge image, is what we're going to send over to Photoshop to then work on. So we're just getting there now. Come on, Lightroom. Here we go. Right, so there's the merged image, so we'll just click on that one to highlight that one on its own. Back into photo again, this time edit in and then Photoshop and that will now send that over to Photoshop for me to work in. And uh, I think I gave it a little bit of colour and some a bit of contrast and, and whatever but um, it might take just a second or two to send over. Now, incidentally this is, this is the easiest way I find to blend two images together although sometimes you do get a little bit of halo in and I've got another image loaded up on Photoshop already where I, I did suffer with a bit of halo in and in that, in that circumstance I really should have just worked manually with two layers and then rubbed out one but I'll show you that in a minute. Right so it's opened it up in Photoshop and we can now start working on it. So as you can see both blended together. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of that little hair there so I'm just going to go to the patch tool Let's just make that a bit bigger, see if we can just get rid of that quickly. Just going to run over that. That's it, it's gone, you won't even know it was there. I love the patch tool, it's great. But uh, anyway, so we've got our blended image now, and it's just a case of editing that now. So I'm just going to edit this quickly, as I did last time. So I'm going to go into the camera raw filter, which is shortcut is shift command and A. So there we go. So just going to scroll to the top. I'm going to take all the highlights down. That's better. There's quite a lot of highlights in these clouds, but um, we'll, we'll just... I'm just going to take the shadows up a bit. Take the blacks down a little bit. Now I'm going to give this a bit of clarity, just give it a bit more punch. There we go. I'm only going to do this really quickly, but you get the idea. So I'm giving that a little bit of punch now, a bit of dehaze perhaps. And then I might... Let's just OK that. Come on, raw filter. Right, so giving it a bit of punch already. I might just just go into the levels a bit. Just take the levels up a bit. And then I might just give it a bit more colour. So let's just get that to there. Just saturate it a bit more. I might even try and bring the yellows out a bit. Look, just the, bring the yellows out in the in the rocks a bit but you get the idea I mean we're a bit uh, the highlights are a bit blown out there now on a normal day I would I'd work a lot more on this but uh, I'm pretty happy with that and that is exactly that, that's as easy as it is really that's as easy as it is now I don't know if you can see there is a slight I'm, I know I mentioned about haloing earlier now if we zoom into this image you can see 
just on the tops of the grass, let me just make my brush a bit smaller, you can see on the tops of the grass they're perhaps a bit darker than they should be, if you can see the tips. Now again, I would, there's a bit of a green halo there, look, you can see it. Now I would just work in Lumenzia and work in the different tones and try and work that out. So if I was to go, say, to the dark, let's have a look what this will do. Yeah, so all the, all the white areas now. So I would then just go change to that and dodge that. I'm only doing this really quickly, but I could then lighten that area. Come on, image progress. I would lighten that area now slightly. What we're on, we're on 100, but this will really lighten it overly. But you can see that that's totally over the top, but you can see how it lightens it. Let's just turn Wi-Fi off. Right, so you can see how it lightens it there. Obviously, if I just go back one and perhaps take the opacity down to 50, I would just lighten that area a bit. And that's just to get rid of that bit of a halo. And then you work in the greens and you get rid of the greens. But anyway, so that's basically it. And then I would obviously flatten that, save it as a the HDR image, and then I'd know where I was. Let's just get rid of the phone. Right. Now then, I was talking about haloing. Let's see if we can find it. Right, this was at Cat Bells. Now that, let's have a look, which one's this? Right, that's the first one. So that's the HDR image, and you can see on the mountain tops, you can actually see it further. You can see it better when it's zoomed out. There's just a little bit of a light glow on the, the hilltop there, on the mountains. Incidentally, this is, I think that's Skidor. That's Blencathra. Lovely morning up cat bells that was. I'll put the link to the video above, but um wanted to get a sun star, got a lovely sun star. So anyway, so that's the overexposed image obviously for the sky, but the correct exposure for the hills and, and the fells, and then obviously that's for the sky and the sun star. Blend the two together and you get that. And then I've but as you can see there, there's just a little bit of halo in. Now what you could do Let's just have a look. So, what I could do, was that the other image? Yeah, that's the other image. So if I bring that down, I could manually layer these together. So I would just bring that into there, snap them together. Incidentally, that snap, when it snaps onto the edge, that's just in view, and then snap. And obviously, if I turn that off, it will let me move that in small increments but I want to get make sure that the layers are perfect so let's just snap that and we'll just snap that on there look and then what I would do obviously I'm going to rush this but I'd go onto my eraser tool and then I'd just erase whichever layer you want to leave so let's just make the brush really big obviously I'm really rushing this but you get the idea and then I would make my brush a lot lot smaller and perhaps change the opacity and then just run along there like that look change the opacity a bit down or change my the size of my the hardness so I take it to about 50% take the brush a bit smaller and then you can really work it in you know this is obviously rushing it but that's the other way of doing it the manual way of doing it but um, a bit more work involved with that I just I, I prefer if I can get away with the Lightroom HDR blending, that's how I'd like to do it. So, but yeah, you get the idea anyway. So let's just close that. We'll put the uh, that image back up. And, uh, it was great to be down on the Jurassic Coast again. It's fantastic. Didn't spend long enough there. It's a bit of a rushed rushed evening really. But anyway, well I hope that's helped you out, guys, on the old HDMR HDR blending exposure blending in Lightroom. If you've got any questions, fire them down below, or, because every day is a learning day and I'm still learning, if you know of a different way, or a quicker way, or better ways to work in Lightroom, because I'm not very good on Lightroom, let me know in the comments below, it'd be great to hear from you. And uh, yeah, so hopefully you've, you've picked that up okay. I picked it up really easy, it's, it's ever so easy, but let me know if you want to ask any questions down below in the comments, and uh, yeah, spot on guys. Well, if you could remember to give the video a quick like, that'd be much appreciated. I don't thank you guys enough. I really appreciate all your support on the channel. It's ticking over nicely now and growing nicely. So, and it's all down to you guys. 
liking and, and the subscribing and the comments. It really does help out the algorithm, so I really appreciate that, guys. And uh, yeah, sorry it's only a short one this week, but um, hopefully that's helped you out. And brilliant, jobs are good. Thanks ever so much for watching, guys. Take care. Catch up soon.